I am live, and there's only one person here, and it's probably me. I don't know. Um, I give you guys a few minutes for your app for more people to pop in because, um, I just announced it. I'm always, I'm not used to announcing it and then jumping back in, and, you know, jumping on or waiting. Um, I'm not a waiter. Um, so I'll just wait for a few minutes. In fact, I got a... Okay, I guess my um my tablet's having a few, it's having a lag time, so forgive me if you are on and I just haven't noticed because of the lag time. Um, don't get involved in that, Jim. That that that, that was too interesting. Hello, Amy, Mona. Hi, you. I'm hoping I don't have certain people from uh, um, Jerry's channel on here because, uh, well, let's just put it this way. Um, they're from Diane's group. And I'm just tired of these people trying to disrupt um, my lives, Jerry's lives. You know, it's just, no. Mm -mm. I did try to, um, hi, Di, or D, I'm sorry, D. Um, I tried to actually remove them um, from the live this morning, and it wouldn't let me. All I could do is put them in timeout, which kind of peeved me off because I knew um, I knew they were just going to cause more issues, and I mean, maximum amount of time you can put them in this time is 30 minutes. It used to be, it used to be if you wanted to, you can put them in time out permanently or until the uh, lie was done with. Um, later on this evening, I am going to have to go through Jerry Ann's channel and see what I can do about removing them. Uh, it's going, nah, it's going, you know, that's all I can say right now. But, um, I've just noticed a few people, like, when I popped, yesterday, when Diane was doing her live, trying, you know, having me play in the background and record her live at the same time was just, like, first off, I thought it was ridiculous. And second off, I, I noticed a whole lot of names popping up that, um, I've seen on Jerry Ann's channel. So I'm like, mm, no, nah, I'm going to start writing it. If I go, like mom, because uh, I talked to mom about her being on Diane's channel, and she was like, I'm on there mostly for shits and giggles. Basically, she was watching the ridiculous stupidity um, that was being presented, and um, she made a couple comments, you know, and I was just like, mom, you know, I, I I really don't care why you're on there. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but don't get involved with this pit of vipers because um, they will turn on her once they're done with her or tired of her or whatnot, and I'm not having it. Mom's got enough um, issues as is. She doesn't need the added aggravation of uh diane and her yeah anyhow we're not going to talk about that uh i don't want to talk about it i just brought it up because you know i've noticed some people um from diane's channel on our channel and what i've seen them say about us on diane's channel was just like okay you pork tongue little um so yeah uh, those particular people may not, um, if I can find a way to, if I can remember how to permanently block on, while during, doing a live, yeah, I won't even deal with them, I'll just, <laughs> you're done, um, but this morning's, uh, this morning's live session, um, with Jerry Ann, 
Um, yeah, I did get a little upset at her because I was trying to um, talk about, you know, to answer basically a couple questions that were d uh, directed m mainly towards me. And, um, you know, she interrupted or basically took the conversation over. And um, I'm like, um, I was not even done talking. You know, but it is her channel, so... You know, that's fine and dandy. I have my channel. Um, so I am... D I am doing my own thing on my own channel. Um, sorry if I looked in that direction because that's where my bedroom is. And Jerry Ann and Oreo are currently in there. Um, giving everybody a break from the, from Oreo. Um... And I, I know when Oriole starts to frustrate Jerry and Jerry wants me to get the dog out of her of our bedroom, she will probably jump on here and um, you know jump on here or try to call me, which is di 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 disruptive of my channel. And um, yeah, she knows what I'm doing in here because we already talked about it, and I already said, yeah, I'm going into my office area to do a live. Um, I have given some thought to something that Jan may or may not approve of, but I've seen how she struggles with having two channels of her own because I was thinking of having a separate channel to, uh, basically not really start all over, but speak more of a, um, speak my mind of, of certain subjects that most of the time most people don't like talking about because, you know, politics and religion. I don't give a rat's rumpus about politics, but um, like I was saying earlier today, there's a lot of people who have misconceptions about who I am and what I do outside of the so-called Christian realm. Now, like we were saying earlier, if it was made by God and used for good purposes, there's nothing wrong with what we do. Um, but if we take those items made by God and do harmful works with them or harmful things with them, then yeah, I, I, I would have a problem. And I'm not a big, I'm not like, basically in layman's terms, I'm still a, a baby or an adolescent in the realms of what some people want to call witchcraft, which in modern day terms, witchcraft in, involves a lot of different things that have nothing to do with Christianity. But there's, um, one, there's no devil in the craft, period. Um, two, like I said, if you're doing good things with what you know or the, the type of... Um, there's like multiple levels or multiple types of witch, witches. Um, so I was thinking about, uh, you know, having a, a separate channel dealing with just that. Um, so, yeah. You now, there's a lot of things going on that I've been thinking about. Um, the more time I have to myself, which it's not that I'm not taking care of Jerry Ann, but I can get this house clean, this house, um cleaned every room or not within like three to four days um so i have like three days to myself to do whatever um so yeah um uh, actually today I'm, i i decided to take it easy um for a lot of different reasons one i thought we were going to be busier than i i i thought we were going to be busy you know the three was sitting down and chatting about, you know, what's our next step, you know, granted right now, there is no next step. There is basically getting the house cleaned up and presentable and then getting the realty agent to, to um, put our house back on the market. So today is just like one of those days where it's like my ankle, well, my ankles and my knees hurt. Um, my hand, my right hand for some reason I get these weird sensations, but my right hand right now feels like um, somebody just either put an IV or some sort of needle into my um, 
to my arm up here, which is usually what they do with me when they uh, go to do um, bl blood draws, because sometimes finding a spot on my arms because of all the medications and, and all the different things I've had to go through because of growing up in the military, you, you go to go overseas, you get a series of shots. Um, you come back from overseas, you get a series of shots. So it's, it's one of those like my, finding my veins in my, um, in my, this area on either arm is sometimes really hard unless you've got somebody who's like really spot on with the, um, needle. Um, are you ready to, are you ready to look God in the eye and explain to him that your witchcraft doesn't harm anyone? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. It doesn't harm anybody. You know, so I have no problem with looking God straight in the eye and first off, thanking him for the items that I use for, for witchcraft. Whether it's spell jars or actual, you know, um, personal usage uh, for the only person on here, if, if she's on here, kicking, yes. Kicking would understand shadow work. You know, there's nothing that I do is harmful. Nothing. And Big Mama, if you, um, who said I'm serving two masters? Who said? There's no master in witchcraft. You know? No, like I said, nothing I do, and I strongly believe this, and I look myself in the mirror every day. What I do with the various ingredients that I have, which is mostly all natural. Um, well, even water is natural. Moon water is natural. You just have to set it up, at, you know, during a full moon. Um, there, I don't have two masters. No. I don't believe, you know, Big Mama, you're, you're trying to start something. I can see that already, and I'm not falling for it. You know, if you don't like what I do, you don't like what I'm talking about, bye-bye. I don't need you in here to spread your negativity. I really don't. Oh, let's see here. That's all right, Kicking. I just barely started a few um, a few moments ago. Um, you know... Let's see what we got here. Sorry, I have to read uh, read this a little bit. Oh, not a big deal. You know what? I'm happy you had some friends over to enjoy. You know, thanks. I almost said Thanksgiving. Heck no. Um, St. Patty's Day. Um. Yeah. Thanks, Kicking. Um, okay. You're trying to understand. That's fine and dandy, but um, y y you have to realize. Just think of it this way. Way before modern medicine, even during the time of Christ and before, Men or women of one form or another used natural items, herbs, spices, you know, various herbs, water, minerals of one form or another, crystals of one form or another, for what people, you know, nowadays call witchcraft. But back then, those people were healers because they used, excuse me, little gnat, they used herbs and water mixed together to create salves put to help heal cuts and wounds of, of the physical nature. Now, the spiritual aspect of witchcraft is basically it has nothing to do with a deity. 
It has nothing to do with a god or gods. It had to do with what they felt was right. Now, granted, Jesus sat down with a variety of what most people back then would call unsavory characters, thieves and murderers, prostitutes, the tax collector, uh, the shaman or shaman of, you know, various tribes. I mean, you got to look at it. During Old Testament times, it talks about how there was a particular group or a particular family of the of the was it the eleven tribes of of Israel that dealt with the sick, the lame, the young, know, the woman who was bleeding from her menstrual cycle, which they considered unclean. Basically, this particular family or this particular group of tribesmen were the healers and soothsayers and medicine people of the time. And they used whatever natural products were available to them for creating their, their salves, their healing potions, their wound care items. There's no harm in that. It's when people become negative and use their knowledge of witchcraft for negative purposes, but the devil has no, there is no devil in the craft because that's a, that's a man-made concept to put the fear of God into children. Um, we're all adults. We can, we can, we can decipher right from wrong. Now, if you're so blinded by, uh, by Christianity or the Bible, that's, that, you know, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, Smack you down about that because there are so many people of today's era who use the Bible for more evil than somebody like me practicing witchcraft. You know, it's it's a sad thing, but it's the truth. Um, oh yeah, exactly. I get up every day, and even sometimes before I go to bed. And I read this gem of a book. Now, because of reading that book, I've been more positive. I've been more. Ha I've been happier. I've been doing things that you know, I probably would not have done, you know, in the past to to promote my own physical, spiritual, and mental health. Um. So it, it's one of those like. How you perceive the world for whatever reason is going to be your personal um, take of anything. And some people are so, you know, they got the blinders on so hardcore that they can't see beyond their own noses, let alone what's going on around them. And I feel sorry for those people because it's like, take the blinders off. You know, quit looking through rose-colored glasses, see the world for what it is, and make your decision to be a positive, happy person, or a Diane. You know, yes, I used her name because it was the first name, the first thing that popped in my head. Um, I, I mean, the only harm that has happened since I started my. I don't know if you want to call it witchcraft journey or pagan journey or what it was, is a paper cut. <laughs> you know, literally. <coughs> <coughs> but I, if I can wake up in the morning and feel like a good, healthy, happy person and go through my day without causing anybody any harm, I call that a good day. I call that a, a day of me just being me without having to deal with negativity or, you know, what some people want to say. that Oh, he lives in a fantasy world. And, no, I don't. No, no. The closest I will come to living in a fantasy world is if I got a, if I got a job with the Rens uh, uh, Chicago Renaissance Fair. Which, by the way, I looked at their their uh, website, and they are actually putting out um, 
ads for hiring people to help work. I don't know, concessions and, and whatever else. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't care, man. I will do that. I will take my trailer. I will live on on the grounds and do whatever, you know, they hire me for. Whether it's food. Since I have a lot of orientation and food, uh, security, you know, whatever. That, that right there, when I saw that, I just kind of went... <laughs> Okay, uh, they start in June. Yeah, we got a, we got enough time to get our butts out there and get me a you know an application going. But who knows? You know, I mean, between the beard and the and the look and a little bit of makeup and the co you know a costume or something like that, which well, I do have a, a Renaissance costume. I actually got two. One of them needs a lot of cleaning. Because of, um, yeah, the air in New York uh, with salt water air and um, humidity levels, it, it kind of caused some um, mildewing. And I don't know how easy it is to clean um, leather or suede or cotton. Um, and I would tell you this much, that Renaissance outfit... It cost me a pretty penny when I bought it, and um, who knows, maybe I'll get involved with uh, somebody who knows how to, how to clean it or can clean it for me. The other thing, the other costume I have is uh, from Renaissance, not Renaissance, excuse me, from Assassin's Creed, so, or uh, Assassin's Creed inspired um, costume. Let's see here, what we got? Um, hey Jim, I just wanted to hop on here and say sorry if I offended you earlier. I wasn't trying to start anything. Um, Roberta, th that's fine. Thank you very much. Um, I there was so many there was there was so many um, negative comments going on that it was hard to to, to pinpoint who was who. Um, but you came on here and said and apologized and I um. I thank you for that. Yes, they do. They throw those big, fat, juicy turkey legs. Um, they also sell um, like meat, meat sticks. You know, like it looks like chunks of, of uh, beef stew or something like that that was cooked on a rotisserie. Um... Oh, why haven't you cleaned it for me yet? <laughs> um, so, so. Oreo. She's is she being a good girl in there or just um, just gnawing on a bone, which is her favorite thing to do. You give her a big bone and she spends the whole day gnawing on, on that thing. I swear sometimes it's like I give her a new one almost every other day, you know, but she loves them. She knows that if she cracks it open and get to the inside where they've got the softer um, pieces and whatnot. Oh man, it's been, it's been so long since I've been to a Renaissance fair, but uh, they served like, they got like the... Uh, I can't remember which one of the I was at, but they had these, like, gigantic pretzels. You know, you can literally take the pretzel and put it over your head and wear, like, a big old, uh, necklace and have your friend do the same thing. You know, be on the other side and just nibble as you go. Okay. Um, well, let's see here. The pretzels, the turkey sticks, the kebabs, the... They had, like... They take a, you can get it in, in three different sizes. You get the orange size and you get the like cantaloupe size and you get a watermelon size. And what it is, is they gut the inside of the watermelon or the melon. And all you have left is a shell. And then what they do is they take that good juicy fruit and they turn it into like an icy, a big old fat icy, put it inside the, uh, the, the, the melon 
and you can go around, you know, eating off, eating the ice cream out of the out of the melon. Um, yeah, yeah, that that was a long time ago. Um, but I mean, you name it, they practically have it, except for it, you know, it's like hand food. You know, there's no, there's very few places to sit down and, and have a plate of food. It's usually <coughs> something you carry around and just nibble on. Um, but like I said, it's been a while since I've gone to an actual Renaissance Fair. Um, I actually looked up the, uh, the, the one in, put it this way, I looked up the one in, in Colorado and by the look of the map, and the amount of vendors they have, everything from clothing to jewelry to, you know, all kinds of different things, plus their food, food stands and all that stuff. And then their spaces for their shows and whatnot, including a, a jousting, a jousting arena. Um, I would say that I would have to, I, this is just me, would have to spend the whole weekend just to see probably about half you know, or three quarters of the actual fair grounds. Um, so it's kind of like, oh my lord. Um, so it's like, if if we get to go to it, um, which I'm pretty sure I will, I don't know about Jerry. <laughs> She'd probably kill me if I went there uh, without her, unless, uh, you know, it was for work. Um, but I would have to, like, use a camper and, and spend the weekend up there. And then if I was working, um, depending on what else I was, whether if I had another job on the weekdays, um, I could probably camp up there the whole time they're there. And their dates for the Colorado uh, Renaissance Fair is June 4th to August 12th. So it goes all the way through June, July, in the first half of August, and I was like, dang, and who knows, my cousin Matt might, might be in that region, maybe at that Renaissance Fair, which would be nice, you know, but, um, that's the thing, uh, let's see here, Yeah, uh, certain states are definitely better at doing it. Um, unfortunately, the state of Missouri, it just recently opened up their first, or their, they, they finally have an actual big fair. Here, here in Missouri, it was like these little itty-bitty fairs. You know, you know, St. Louis would have one. Um, you know, the biggest, closest uh, Renaissance Fair to us, it would be Topeka, Kansas. And that's, you know, a good four or five hour plus drive. Um, and, excuse me, my, not that I'm flipping anybody off, but my eye has just got itchy. Like something flew into it. But, yeah, I love the Renaissance Fair. My first Renaissance Fair was, mm, let's see here, we moved out here in 94. So I think it was either 90, oh, I'll find out real quick, hold on. Get my Renaissance mug from, from Arizona, or my chalice. Um, let's see if my eyes will let me, 93. 1993, still living in Arizona. That was my first Renaissance fair, and ever since then it's like, you know, how many times can I go without without breaking the bank or, or how, how many, you know, can we go once a year type deal? Um, and then the one that Jerry Ann and I went to in Sherwood Forest, New York, which is upstate New York. Um, that was a nice, mm, that was a nice one. But so far, I think uh, this one here in Colorado is going to be the hugest one we've been to. Um, my cousin Matthew, uh, actually 
helped set up and start the uh, Renaissance Fair in um, in Washington State. And, you know, he's been traveling the fairs for a while. Um, he used to travel all of the West Coast um, areas. Um, he was actually traveling around teaching people how to make mead, and I just kind of went, and you didn't come out here to teach me? You know, now he's doing woodwork. You know, he does woodworking. So, and my cousin Matt is, you know, yeah, he, he's one of the few Hinsons that I know of that is multi-talented and a veteran of the military. He was a nuclear sub-driver out of um, Seattle, the, uh, the naval base in Seattle. Uh, let me see if I can catch up real quick. I'm sorry. I, do, 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 do. I get nostalgic. No. Uh, I will try as much as... Sorry, this is from Berg. I would never, uh, never do anything in a desert again. Too bloody hot. Now, if I were to go camping in an area that's, like, semi-desert, like Prescott, you know, yes. Um, yeah, I'm still feeling well. It's, it's, it's that time of year where the allergens start to bug me and I start getting post-nasal drip, which eventually causes, you know, my throat to tighten up a little bit and my voice kind of... Crackles, but um, otherwise I am. I'm actually doing uh, better than I thought I was going to do today because when I woke up this morning, I was just kind of like, "Oh, I can't let my 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 health uh, drag St. Patrick's Day down." Gotcha, you little shite! Freaking gnats all over the place. Um, Oh, that person's back. Thanks, Jerry. I, I did not realize they were back. Um, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Okay, I got a couple different ones here in Rhode Island. Yeah, some states have like a bunch of little tiny festivals all over their state. Some of them, like Colorado and Arizona and New York, have one big gigantic one and it's like basically last time we went to a big one and we got done and um we were traveling back to our friend's house in texas because that was the last one we were in i was so exhausted i was just like can i take a nap um but it was really nice <laughs> um let's see here Sorry, I'm catching up. I thought you were liked. You liked Vox? Vox, 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 Vox. I'm trying to remember who Vox was or is. Um, but anyhow. Um, Jerry put that person in time out, um, kicking, uh, I'm bouncing all over the place. I am so sorry. There are a lot of scary things in the desert that come out at nighttime. I mean, sleep, put basically this way. If I were to go camping in the desert, it would not be in a tent because... Your hot body is going to attract rattlesnakes. And that's the last thing I need to find in my tent. Um, but there are a lot of cute things that come out at nighttime in the desert. Like the kangaroo rat. It doesn't even look like... Uh, not rat. Excuse me. Kangaroo mouse. Where did a rat come from? Um, uh, fair, uh, foxes. 
um, the desert foxes. We don't have desert foxes here in the States, but I know of a lot of different cute, cuddly, fun little animals that come out at night. One of my favorite animals that I, that, well, I'll tell you the story in a second. One of my favorite animals out of the desert here in the United States is the burrowing owl. And I'll tell you a little bit more about, um, Flagstaff is nice. Uh, my cousin, um, graduated from the college up there, the state college up there, um, back in uh, mid 80s, no, late 80s, early 90s. I don't know. Uh, I'd have to try to contact her to find out when she did that, but, um, uh, let's see here, um, uh, yeah, yeah, Texas, um, I guess they asked you, Jerry, uh, if you liked Renaissance fairs, or which, or, I don't know, um, yes, I do hear the barking, but that's all right, I, you know, she's playing, um, yeah, I'm trying to, um, get all the, uh, the names, um, of people that, um, that basically are being rude. And so far it's only the one person. I think that person also was rude on, um, the morning chat. Um, Tarantula, scorpions, and snakes, yeah, I don't like any of those. Any of those. Um, well, our plans are, um, we are getting a, um, we are getting a trailer from a friend, uh, from a friend of ours. Um, and it should be here in April. And um, we are, we, I am, I don't know about Jerry, but I am thinking about doing uh, vlogs while we're camping. Um, I've always wanted to, to um, take people, you know, on my, on my, on my journeys or on my trips. Um, so it's like, yeah. So I am, I, I'm just like, you know, I, I've got like a mental list of things that actually, are, that list is actually staying in my head of what I would like to do when we get to Colorado. And I'm not talking about just the the camping trips or, or getting out in nature or anything like that, but I'm talking about like home and how to decorate it and, you know, uh, you know, how long is it going to take for us to afford, you know, a piece of land to build on, you know, and there, uh, there are some nice pieces of land uh, out there around Canyon and Pueblo and, you know, places like that. So it's like, yeah. So it's, it's, yeah. Um... <laughs> I thought Texas was huge, but I've seen, you know, I thought uh, the one in New York was bigger, but I don't know. That's just me. Um... So, uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of things. <coughs> Excuse me. No, I have not gotten a lottery tickets yet because I haven't gotten out there to, to get them. I want to, but it's like, I guess I'm waiting for the right opportunity. I don't know. I don't know why I haven't gotten them yet, to be honest with you. I mean, it is, it's, it's one of those like, okay, huh. 
Hold on a second, folks. Um, I um so I, I had to read something real quick. But um the way sorry, my mind just kinda went, eh what are we talking about? Um Okay, uh New York's um Renaissance Fair is in an area called Shor Sherwood Forest. I do not remember what town is closest. Um, Jerry could probably tell you exactly where Sherwood Forest is in uh, New York. I know it's uh, upstate. It's if I were to take a map and what you know the um, what I call a book. Boot Hill of New York, where it go. Then you've got that part that goes over Pennsylvania. It's up in that area. So, <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure if I had a map, we can get a map available. I could tell you exactly um, where Sherwood is. Oh, Sterling, not Sherwood. What? Why am I thinking Sherwood? Because of the town up there. Tuxedo. Okay. But, um, oh boy, how long have I been on? Oh, not even 45 minutes. I just looked at my clock and I'm like, oh, I got to get off this so I can make dinner. Um, I am making, um, no, I thought there was a, a town or something, or a location in upstate New York called Sherwood, but I know there's a Sherwood, England, um, but anyhow. Yeah, I know I started late. Um, I didn't see any of my, uh, my, I didn't see anybody else that I thought might be coming on, but it is, well, it's after seven o'clock East Coast and if any, anybody is a viewer from the West Coast, it's like 4 o'clock there. So, oh, just just as we was getting, uh, about ready to get off there, Marguerite. Um, I'm sorry. I started late. I should have probably done my, um, my live after dinner. But, um, yeah. Dates, 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 dates. Oh, for coming here? Um, okay, um, great. Um, great, because I need, I, I need a space to get, a space to stay in and get out of this house for, or for a while. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, no, there are some times I wish I could get out by myself, uh, to spend some time, like a, a weekend or so to, uh, To, um, just, I don't know. I know, Jerry, but I, I, I guess if I just sleep out, out in the, out in the yard, um, in it for a, a, a day or two, I would probably feel less can, I don't know if I want to say congested or or what I don't want to say anything to be offensive towards my mom because for the most part oh bugger I'm gonna need help uh, later on this evening oh that's mom um mom's you know smoking has increased for one reason or another I don't know if it's stress or what but um let's see here Yeah, 
You're right about that, Becky. But um, it's just with Jerry being sick the way she is, it's kind of hard for it's kind of hard for me to um, comfortably feel like I can get out of the house away from her for a day or so or a day because I mean we've got the dog, we've got you know people to feed and things like that, but. We'll talk about it. Uh, <laughs> um, well, anyhow, I'm going to end this so I can make dinner, uh, feed the troops, basically. I will, like that, today is, tomorrow, oh man, tomorrow I have to get up early for a 8.30 um, MRI on my lower back. Yeah, I, I know, Jerry. We have to plan a lot of things out. There's a lot of things going on. Um, I don't know about that, Becky. Um, like I said, I, I think the way I feel right now is Jerry's getting better. She's able to get up and move, move about without too many problems. She can sit out in the living room for a couple of hours before her body starts to hurt. Um... And like I said, if if I do it, to, if I, uh -huh, uh -huh, um, no, it's between me and Jerry. Um, but I have to go cook, so I'm gonna say good night. You guys have a go, uh, good day. Good day. Good the rest of your weekend. Enjoy the rest of St. Patty's Day. For those of you living on the West Coast, I hope you guys have family coming over, or you're going to family. Um, and enjoying it. So until then, or until Tuesday, uh, I will see you guys later. Bye.